Hi, welcome to the 10 minute video summary of the message that was delivered at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 5th of October 2014. My name is Don Bold, I'm a pastor at the church, and so let's just uh, take, pray quickly and uh, we'll just dive right into the word. And Father, we pray that, uh, that those who hear this message through this uh, media format, Lord, that, uh, that they would receive the same blessing uh, that we received when we received this message together at church. And uh, Lord, I pray your blessing on each and every listener, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, we've been talking about this, this thing about the salvation of the soul, and this week, uh, really what I want to talk about is healing a broken soul. All right, that, uh, that this is an aspect, if you will, of the salvation of the soul. And, uh, and so I'm starting with that same scripture where it says, in humility, receive the word implanted, or the, engrafted, I like that word from the King James, uh, which is able to save your souls. All right, and uh, salvation includes healing and deliverance, okay? That, you know, God does not save us and then leave us, you know, broken in all these other ways. You know, he has a, uh, a plan uh, for us to overcome in the war that's going on in our soul. And so, uh, so where does the answer come from? That's, that's really what I want to start with here. You know, in Psalm 121, verses 1 through 2, it says, A song of ascents, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. All right, and there's a lot of different ways of looking at that scripture and a lot that are out there, but I really dug down into this and I really believe that, that I understand uh, what's being said here, which is that, you know, they were in trouble and so they look up to the hills and what was up in the hills around Jerusalem? You know, the places where, high places were most of the time. Uh, high places were places where people went and either uh, worshipped uh, pagan deities uh, or sometimes uh, even some people just, for, for lack of understanding or lack of submission, uh, would go up there and offer sacrifices in ways that God didn't desire, uh, nonetheless, up in those high places. The mountains were also places where they ran to to hide uh, when they were in deep trouble. <clears throat> and so he says, I look up to these mountains, but then I ask myself the question, and, and it is a question, from where shall my help come? All right, And he says, my help comes from the Lord. All right, uh, Jeremiah uh, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. Return, O faithless sons, I will heal your faithlessness. Behold, we come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Surely the hills are a deception, okay, a tumult on the mountains. Surely in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. So this idea that, you know, that, that if we want to be delivered, if we want to be set free, if we want to be healed, if we want uh, to be saved, you know, this thing that needs to become central to us is that our help, you know, that where we're going to receive this from is from the Lord. Now, I'm going to take this a little bit deeper as we go. And uh, look to God. Focus our, our life and attention on Him. All right, He gives. We need to receive to accept what God gives. And I'd like to take another look at those scriptures that we talked about last time. And uh, we were talking about the things that we receive from the Lord and uh, this week, I'd like to take a look at those same scriptures and just read the little part in there that tells us the action that's going on here, all right? Now, the, the first one in James 1, 5 and 6, ask of God. It says, but if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously. All right, so, you know, it's just, it's, it's the Lord that, you know, what we're looking for is in him. All right, uh, receive what the Lord promised, okay? Uh, this thing about uh, the person who perseveres under trial, it says he will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised. He will receive what the Lord promised, okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians one twenty. we looked at that as associated with this. As many as are the promises of God in him, they are yes. It's in him, the promises, what we're seeking, what we're, we're needing to be implanted, to be engrafted into us is from him, Okay, and, and, and we're going to go a little bit more with this. Uh, good things, perfect gifts. It says they come down from God. That's in uh, chapter uh, 1, verses 17 and 18 of the book of James. All right, every good, and, good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. And then the scripture that we were focusing on in the beginning, focus on humbly receiving from God. All right, James 1.21, therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness in humility, what? 
receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. And this is something we are receiving from the Lord. And it is the Holy Ghost, it is the Holy Spirit, who is the one who engrafts this word to us. You know, when you see me, you know, holding a Bible, I will tell you, this is the word of God. But it is not only the Bible that is the word of God, but that the Holy Spirit uh, is the one who enlightens our heart to be able to, to receive this illumined, this lit up word uh, from that Bible so that it's not just words written on a page. You know, the word of God is something coming from God, all right? And so uh, the living word becomes a part of us, okay? This engrafted word, it becomes part of us. The word of God is living and active, according to uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, all right? Seeking and setting. All right, this seeking God and setting our minds or setting our affections. Colossians 3, 1 through 3 says, Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Seeking and setting. That word seeking is a very interesting word, all right, because what it's talking about is worship. It's about yielding to, uh, to, to God, to, to surrendering ourselves before God, bowing ourselves and our will to the Lord, all right, and then this idea of setting your mind. All right, it, it, it's about uh, the things that we exercise our mind over and the things that we entertain. You know, there's this, uh, you know, sometimes when I was working with the fellows in Teen Challenge and trying to help them, they'd been in such corrupt lives for so long and, and trying to get their minds where their minds were set the right way. And uh, we would get them into the Word of God and, 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 and start working with them. And, you know, they, but they would talk about some of the bad thoughts that they'd had and, you know, the things that, they, that still sometimes the thoughts that came to them. And I said, yeah, but they come, but do you entertain them? You know, because if you entertain the thoughts, if you talk with those thoughts that come, you know, if you give some substance to them, they'll stay and become powerful. You know, sometimes somebody would come in and say, oh, I'm just so troubled at having these crazy thoughts. And I say, well, what are your crazy thoughts? They'd tell me their crazy thoughts. They'd say, I've had as crazy thoughts as that. Let me tell you the difference. I don't entertain them. I don't entertain them. I don't do what's necessary to keep them. I do what's necessary uh, to send them on their way and, and to not let them become a, a part of my thinking in my life. I wish I could say that I practiced that perfectly, but uh, I don't think any of us does. And so there's times you just got to go back and repent and get the Word of God and, and push that, that bad idea, that bad thought out. All right? And so seeking first, uh, you know, and the natural will follow. Okay, Matthew 6, 32 and 34, through 34. Uh, for the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. All right, and again, we're into the same word for seeking, which is this idea of worshiping or bowing to his rule. Okay, so this seeking the kingdom, all right, is bowing to the rule of God, all right, that, that my, in my heart and mind, it's to find what I'm trying to find in him, all right, not not, not in, the, in my circumstances, not in the things that I practice, but to find it in Him. Get into His presence and find the things that I need in Him. And, uh, and, but the, the, the seeking that the world does is different, all right? It says the Gentiles eagerly seek these things. It means intensely crave and demand. That's not the spirit in which we come to the Lord. We come bowing ourselves to his rule, knowing that he will provide the things we need. And that in both the New and Old Testaments, in the Old Testament we get the promise, in the New Testament we get the fulfillment in Jesus Christ. That God is my God, my strength, my shield, my salvation, my shepherd, my helper, my, the defense of my life, my light, my rock, my portion, my inheritance, my hope, my righteousness, my strong tower, and more. Okay? It is Him. That's what we're desiring. That's what we're seeking is Him. Not the thing. The thing comes with Him, but it's Him that we're seeking, all right? Psalm 118, verse 14, The Lord is my strength and my song, uh, and He has become my salvation. And I love that, that God has, has become our song. It's the sound that comes from our heart. In Zechariah 13, verse 9, He says, They will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say they are my people, and they will say the Lord is my God. God is our answer. Christ is our answer. 
Matthew 11, 28 through 29. Come to me, he said. Take my yoke upon you, and you'll find rest for your souls. And this yoke, it was the teaching. That's I, I found this in both Jewish and Christian sources, that the yoke that was being spoken of here, uh, and the yoke of, of the rabbi was his teaching. And, and, and what did it weigh? All right, what did it require of us? And so the, the two behaviors that, uh, that, that apply here are to take on the yoke. We repeat what we, what's been said to us. And we imitate that which we've seen in him. And that that's where we want to find is that sweet spot in, in worship and in, and in our lives where we can seek him and find him because he is what we were seeking. And with that, I'm going to say God bless you. And we'll see you next time in the 10-minute video summary.